Are you ready for some science? I'm ready for McSteiger science. Tiger Science. So, uh, our theme, topic for today, uh, plant and animal cells. Awesome. I mean, two, two very different types of cells. It's amazing that the features that, you, that we want to recognize, um, how they differ, how they're similar as well. What are some examples? Well, similar. I mean, you've got the nucleus. You've got... Mitochondria. Mighty mitochondria. Mighty mitochondria. You've got the, you know, you've got the, the vacuoles, you've got the cell membrane, you've got the cytoplasm. How about the endoplasmic reticulum? Endoplasmic reticulum. So those are some really uh, prominent organelles that uh, are similar in both animal and plant cells, but we cannot forget the differences. Huge differences. I mean, not only in terms of organelles, such as your, your cell wall, your, your chloroplasts, right? Soaking up those rays, creating energy. Photosynthesis. Beautiful. Ah, absolutely. And uh, there might be a couple others in there, too. Well, you've got that large central vacuole as well, right? I mean, that, that's just massive. Massive. Uh, you might also recognize some differences in terms of their distribution and the way in which they're arranged. Yeah, there's some size patterns. patterns. Recurring theme. Oh, yes. So, in the lab today, uh, we are going to take a closer look at animal and plant cells by using uh, an onion sample. So, using onion cells. And, uh, you okay? Yeah, I just get a little teary eyed when we talk about onions. Yeah. Onions. Uh, and we're also going to be using cheek cells from us uh, as an example of animal cells. And we're going to take a look at those samples under the microscope and uh, compare them. So we kind of like listed a couple things here. The purpose, so that we don't forget, um, it's up here, to observe and compare the features and characteristics of plant and animal cells. We want to see now in real action what are these features and characteristics. And an onion and our own cheek cells. Your very own cheek cells. And you want to also, as we're looking at these uh, these features, compare the uh, the two. Look at see first of all, are there any organelles, prominent organelles that you see, and see if you can compare uh, and take a look at the similarities and differences between the onion and cheek cells. In this uh, lab, you're going to be creating four different slides. <laughs> Four? Four. So they're for four wet mounts, like you said. Practice. Here are some slides to prepare. Onion sample water mount. Onion sample metal and blue mount. Cheek sample water mount. And cheek sample metal and blue mount. Uh, you're going to have two onion samples. One of your onion sample, you are going to prepare a water mount. And in the second onion sample, you are going to uh, prepare a blue methylene stain. And then, of course, you're going to prepare the, the same two slides using the cheek sample, so with a water mount and with methylene blue. And really, it's just all about testing variables. We love testing all right. variables. So we are now going to uh, show you guys uh, how to properly, once again, uh, provide these slide mounts. These four slides, we're going to prepare our own four and uh, give you some helpful tips on um, how to do this the best way. Well, what we think is the best way. <laughs> Preparing onion samples. Now, the best way to create your sample slide is just breaking off, snapping off a piece of the onion like this. And what you want to get is, first of all, the inside of the onion. 
And if you take a look, once you break off a piece of onion, you can see you're going to get a little film. This little film here is what you want. You want something very thin because the last thing you want is something that overlaps onto your slide and therefore you have cells that are overlapping and you can't really see them clear or clear enough. And with my pipette, I will get some water and you basically only need about one or two droplets of water in this water melt, okay? Um, and then grab your cover slip, once again, at a 45 degree angle, and drop it down. Repairing cheek sample. So you need a Q-tip, as you can see right here, and of course you need a willing participant to open up their mouth, and take this Q-tip, and rub, and try and get uh, a cheek cell sample. And you need to do this twice again, one for a water mount and one for a blue methylene stain mount. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to take this Q-tip, you're going to open up your mouth, you want to rub it on the inside of your cheek, uh, you even want to maybe try and get on top of your tongue, underneath the tongue, all around to really soak it up with some good mucus gook, and then rub it on your slide to prepare your sample for a cheek sample. Ah! see it with the glare, but you then want to rub the Q-tip, all that gook, all over the slide there. I don't know if you can really see it on the screen, but there's definitely a lot of mucus gook on there. So I got some methylene blue now. And with the methylene blue, it's the same process as the water. You just want one droplet like that on your slide, and that's all you need. And apply the cover slip on. And you can see how um, it's starting to absorb now with my little bit of help there. Uh, and even on the inside, I don't know if you can see, I'll do it in there. You can see how the methylene blue is absorbing all throughout the sample. And that's what you want. And another thing with methylene blue is it takes time for it to absorb throughout the specimen. So you want to give it a little bit of time before you put it under the microscope so that it does its absorption process. That's important. So here is the sample for the onion cell without water, or with water, sorry. And here is your sample uh, of an onion cell with methylene blue. Here is my sample with cheek cell, uh, just with uh, water mount and a sample here that uh, is cheek cells once again under methylene blue. So you're gonna have four different samples to prepare. Onion cell observations. And this is using the low power object objective lens, which of course you always start with, to scan your specimen and look for a good spot to zoom look in. Look at the uniformity among the structures of the plant cells. You know, it's like a pattern. I think it could be the nucleus. nucleus. Oh, look at the nucleus. Okay, you could just oh, listen carefully. You can just hear them directing the activities for the rest of the cell. <laughs> I've never seen such movement inside of a cell before. This is crazy. This is crazy. That's nuts. Look at that. It's like a like a veritable highway of movement inside there. Oh, I think I've the said highway that. Highway of endoplasmic reticulum. Oh, straight to the nucleus. Straight to the nucleus. Look at those protein packages. Strong, strongly visible structures. Even more distinct now that the stain has had a chance to saturate through the cells. And you can see, yeah, like you can really see the cell wall much more vibrant now. And, and this one down here, there's, there seem to be multiple structures visible You there. know what that could be? We might be seeing the central vacuole. Essential to maintain the shape and structure. Yeah, and storage. Wow. Cheek cell observations. Now, do you see any kind of 
pattern or sequence here, Jen Stagger? There is no pattern. It's almost like chaos. It looks kind of like a, a mosh pit at a metal concert. So as you can see, Staggerites, we've got some very distinct cells here. And you'll note the shape, the arrangement, the size is vastly different than the plant cells that we looked at. But what do you notice in the middle? The, the nucleus! That's awesome. That's a very, that's an excellent sample again. I think, my, I, think I might take a picture of this and send it to my dentist. <gasps> What a Take a look idea. at my cheek cells. Under the medium power. It's so amazing. I mean, e even, yeah, even like sirens are going off exactly. at the, the, the sight of these awesome cheek cells in methylene blue. Look at the nucleus. Oh my God. I mean, look how blue the nucleus is. It totally absorbed the methylene blue. That's awesome. That is amazing. That is so awesome. So again, we're definitely seeing the nucleus. Clearly we have some cell membranes. Some and cytoplasm. cytoplasm. Absolutely. Now don't you dare tell me that you see a cell wall on these cheek cells. No, 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 no. no. I, don't even think. There's one uh, cheek cell that we have on high power. It's kind of like hiding it behind a bush. <laughs> Here are some concluding remarks. Welcome back, Steigerites. So now that you've had a chance to observe your, your various samples and specimens under the microscope and uh, you know get a chance to see those different organelles and compare the differences between the planet. I, I can't believe we saw stuff moving. That was insane. To the nucleus. That nucleus is a powerful machine. Oh my goodness, yeah. Well, I mean, that was pretty awesome. And uh, now for, for, for more fun, uh, we just want to bring your attention back to the fact that, you know, your, your follow-up observations are those, those field of view sketches. And we can't stress the importance enough of, of accurately capturing what you're seeing with detailed sketches. Of course, you're going to want to calculate your field of view diameter, which will then help you to estimate the size of the specimen, which, of course, will provide further distinction between the plant and animal cells. Yeah, it's always important when you're, when you're working with a microscope, field of view drawings and those microscope calculations are a definite uh, need for Once sure. Once again, thank you for joining us for another episode of McStiger Science. McStiger! McStiger Science. Doing things differently.